Corinthians chapter number 1, 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, the Holy Word of God. First Corinthians chapter number 1, we're going to begin the reading midway of the chapter here in verse number 17. So if you please stand with us when you found your place, as we reverence the Word of God. It is to be reverenced. I'll be happy when they get the Bible back in school. I'll be happy when they get the Bible back in our courthouses. I'll be even more happy when the Bible's gotten back into our homes. Verse number 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, least the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I am destroyed, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribes? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? And after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. But we, Christians, preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews, a stumbling block. Unto the Greek, foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greek, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Father, thank you so much to be here today with your people. I'm so grateful that we have access unto you. I'm so grateful for what you are doing. Lord, I, I know that you're not going to force man to do anything. And Lord, you're not going to force anyone here this morning. But I believe, oh God, as you're drawing through the power of the Holy Spirit of God, right now, Lord, there needs to be, oh God, a supernatural power. Lord, to take place, a change, a transformation. My God, I'm asking of you, Lord, that you will bless us here Continue to pour out your presence and power and might. Lord, I pray for everyone in attendance today that the Holy Ghost of God has spoken to their hearts. Lord, I don't want to be far from you, Lord. I want to draw nigh unto you. I want to be so close to you, Lord. And I pray right now, dear God, I'll say nothing that's pleasing to myself. Nothing, oh God, that's pleasing to man. But all the words that I say will be done through the Holy Spirit of God and pleasing unto you. Bless, I pray now, everything that's done. Glory be given unto your name. I pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing there. Beloved, we live in the Bible Belt. We live in the Bible Belt. In essence, what that means is that there's a church on every corner. There's a church, matter of fact, there's multiple churches down Zora Road. There's many churches in Chesterfield County. There's 17 Southern Baptist churches in our association. We have churches all throughout this Bible Belt region. There's some things that I could take for granted. There's some things that I could take for granted for those that are in a, attendance today. One of those things could be that every single one of you believes today that you're going to die. And when you die, you're going to stand before Jesus. I could take for granted that every single one of us in here in attendance, because we're in the Bible Belt, that you believe the gospel. I could take that for granted. That you believe in the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That for God to love the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. I could also take for granted that every single one of us in attendance is going to sit one day at the marriage supper of the Lamb. 
and dine with Jesus forever throughout eternity. But beloved, to take that for granted would mark me a fool. For I know better than that and so do you. The Bible tells us, Jesus said this here in the Gospels in Matthew chapter number 7 and verse number 20. He said, by their fruits, you shall know the uh, By the fruits that they bear, you will know the person. Beloved, you can go down the pathway if you want to about judge not, at least you be judged. Jesus is telling us to judge them by their fruits. By the life that you live is what you're telling everyone you are. Hide it all you want to, even deceive yourself. But by your fruits, you even know your own life. Beloved, we're living in the Bible Belt. And the fruits of righteousness can only be produced when one is converted. When one is transformed. Jesus even said this here. He said, unless you be converted as like this child, you'll not enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus told Nicodemus the same thing in John chapter 3. He said, you must be born again. To enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must be changed. Now, we all know about this change. You do. You know about the change. I know you do. Especially those of you that are a little bit older than me. You keep telling me how your body is changing. Now, I'm thankful, praise God, that we got little babies in the church. I was there when some of you mothers gave birth to your children. And I can tell you this here, that child, when it was born, does not stay the same. It changes. Matter of fact, there's some people that only seen children at their birth. And you see that child at their birth there, they've got two hands and two feet. They have ten fingers and ten toes, two eyes and all that, right? Now, they had the same members, but they're not the same individual. When they grow up, their body changes. This is what Jesus Christ is saying. He's telling every single one of us, by their fruits, you shall know them. By their fruits, the examples of that changed life. Beloved, I'm so thankful, hallelujah, that the Bible tells us that this changed life it takes place, that transformation takes place in salvation and salvation is only of the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation only comes through Calvary. It only comes through the old rugged cross. Beloved, I'm so grateful, hallelujah, that the Bible tells us now in verse number 17 about this wonderful thing called the cross. Can we focus this morning on the cross? Can we focus just a little bit if you will stop speaking to yourself and stop talking to your neighbor and listen to the Lord and get focused on the old rugged cross this morning? Hey, the Bible says here, this is what the Word of God says in verse number 17. Paul says, said, man didn't send me, I didn't send myself, and in the day that we're living in, unfortunately, there are preachers that didn't send themselves because they haven't been saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, but yet they're standing behind a pulpit, and they're so-called preaching what ain't the Word of God. Paul said, I've been sent by God to preach unto you, not with man's wisdom, not with the enticement of the flesh man, but I've come to preach unto you Christ and Him crucified. Amen. If there's a thing that we need today in the, la the land that we live in is more preaching about Christ and the cross of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you this here, the preaching of the cross, it's not exciting, it's not. The preaching of the cross, it does not excite the flesh of man, but what it does, it provokes the man, it provokes the individual to look at the condition of their soul. That's what the cross does. The cross of Jesus Christ is an approach to mankind. It tells man that you're not good enough, you'll never be good enough to save yourself, to enter into heaven, there's only one way and it's through the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. The cross, can I tell you this here as well? The Bible tells us, we read it here in the text, the preaching of the cross is foolishness 
For you that think that what I'm about to say this morning is foolishness is because you're perishing. For you that think, preacher, I can't believe that you're preaching on that message. Why aren't you preaching on something else right here? The Bible says if you think that way, it's because you're perishing. You're going to go to hell. The Bible says the preaching of the cross is foolishness unto them that are perishing. That's why the cross offends so many people. You see it as an offensive thing, a foolish thing to do. The Bible goes on and tells us that the preaching of the cross unto them that believe is what? The power of God. Amen, church, hallelujah. We need more preaching, powerful preaching on the cross of Jesus Christ. I'm not here, oh, I'm not to intellect you. I'm not here to excite you or to educate you or to ruffle your feathers or none of that, my friend. I'm here to tell you about the old rugged cross and about the cross of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Hey, I'm thankful that the cross has the power to give new life to whosoever, amen. Man. The preaching of the cross, beloved, at the cross. If I could say this here, at the cross, I like that song, at the cross. I don't know about y'all, praise God. At the cross, beloved, where the promise of God was kept. At the cross, that's where God told Adam and Eve there. He said, I'm going to send a seed through the woman. And that seed there is going to bruise the head of Satan, but it's also going to open up the doorway to heaven. Hallelujah. At the cross, that's exactly what Jesus Christ did. At the cross, my Savior, the Savior, of the world is where he bled. Jesus Christ shed his red, royal, righteous and holy blood for you and I that are unrighteous for what? The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 9 that he shed his blood and by his blood he entered into the holy place one time to do what? To redeem us, to purchase our redemption. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. That's what Jesus Christ did when he shed his precious blood. He purchased our eternal redemption. Amen. Amen. On the cross is where Jesus bled. On the cross, hallelujah, at the cross is where he took his last breath. Jesus, he bled and he died on the old rugged cross. Beloved, the Bible tells us here, he yelled out those last words, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. He breathed his last breath. That's what Jesus Christ did. He told us that he was going to do that. He told us, he said, greater love hath no man than this. And he laid down his life for friend. They, Jesus Christ looked at you and I. He looked at the entire world and seen us as friends. He seen us and wanting us to go into a friendship with him. This is the beautiful thing about salvation. We've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And hallelujah, it just doesn't stop there. It gets deeper. Amen. It goes further into a friendship with Jesus Christ. Whoo! No other friend like Jesus. Amen. He's been the best friend that I've ever had. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, beloved, I'm telling you, at the cross is where Jesus Christ, he brought appeasement to the wrath of God. There's a God who is holy. Jehovah. He's holy and we are sinful man born into sin. Beloved, when you took your first step, you stepped into sin. When you breathed your first breath, you were breathing sin. Hey, the Bible tells us now we were born into sin because of Adam. Adam's transgression was passed on to mankind. You want to know why we have the violence? You want to know why we have the anger? You want to know why we have people that are dying from diseases? You want to know why all these bad things are happening? It's because of one man's disobedience. All are made sinners. And the wrath of God is the only thing that sinners deserve. Say, preacher, how dare you say such a thing? That's what God said. The wages of sin is death. That's not just a physical death. That's the spiritual death. That's being separated from God. But the love of God, hallelujah, was commended toward you and I. That Christ Jesus should die for us. I thank God that Jesus, when he was at the cross, he pleased God by his sacrifice. The wrath of God was satisfied through the life of Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, thanks be unto God, hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus, for taking the wrath of God for me and for whosoever. Amen. Hallelujah to that. At the cross. Also, may I say this right here, in the cross, church. In the cross. I'm talking about the cross of Jesus Christ. Not the cross that you hang around your neck. Not the cross that man may put out there. But the cross of Jesus Christ. In the cross is where my glory lies. God forbid the Bible tells us that we should glory in anything else save the cross of Jesus Jesus Christ. Hey, I'm not going to stand before you here today and tell you that Jason's a good man. You're a good woman. I'm going to stand before you and tell you right now all that I am today, I am by the grace of God. All that I am today is because one day I fell on my face and I went to an old rugged cross and that cross was the Christ across the there where he laid down his life for me and my life had been transformed and changed forever. Hallelujah. I'm not glorying in anything. I'm not glorying in the church. Not glorying in the programs. Our glory is in the cross of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm glad that I've been to the cross. And I want to say this right here. I'm glad that my hope is in the cross. Amen. My hope is in the cross of Jesus Christ. Oh, say, preacher, you're not hoping in man. You're not hoping in the White House. You're not hoping in the Republican Party. You're not hoping in this person. Oh, no. My hope is in Jesus. I'm totally trusting in him and nothing else and no one else. Amen. But Jesus and Jesus alone. I'm talking about the cross and the beauty of the cross, the gore of the cross. We glory in the cross. The cross now, my hope is found in the cross. My home is secured. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that salvation is not of works. It's, it's not of works, but it's any man should boast. Jesus Christ has done it all. Beloved, I will let you know the only way you're going to get to heaven, the only way you're going to have a home in heaven is through the cross. Jesus said it himself. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. And John John chapter 14, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Did he not say that? And in verse number six, here he tells us that he's the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the father but by him. I'm so thankful, hallelujah, that I'm not going to heaven because I put money in a collection plate, because I've been baptized, because I've joined a church. I'm not going to heaven because I help little ladies cross the road or I pick something off the top shelf or I hold a door for somebody. I'm going to heaven, hallelujah, because of the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's it, friend. You try getting there yourself. I hear people today even saying this right here. Well, you know, once you get saved, you got to keep yourself saved. I find that nowhere in the Word of God. I'm going to tell you who I'm kept by. I'm kept by Christ. I'm in His hand. And again, who's all is in Jesus' hand? It's in the Father's hand. And I, hallelujah, I'm talking about the double portion there, praise God. And if you're in Christ, friend, you ain't got to keep yourself saved. He'll keep you saved. Oh, yes, in the cross, in the cross, in the cross, my heart beats. In the cross, my heart lives for. Galatians 2, 20 said, For I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live, I live in this flesh. What? I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. My heart beats not for anybody else or anything else, but for Jesus. Amen. I hope you can say the same thing. That your heart beats for Jesus. Not for self, but for Jesus. Not for me, but for Jesus. Is your heart beating for him? In the cross. Amen. That's what we're talking about. At the cross. I say, preacher, why do you live? I don't live because of me. I live because of Christ who lives in me. Hallelujah. Beloved, I hope we can say that you've been to the cross. For it's by the cross, and you listen well, it's by the cross that Satan is defeated. You can't defeat him because you've got wise and wisdom and all this intellect there. You can't beat him because you surround yourself with good people. The only way he's defeated is through the cross of Jesus Christ. Hey, by the cross, sinners are made saints. Hallelujah. Oh, thanks be unto God for that. We are to thank God. If, I, whoo, I'm telling you, church, hallelujah that we've been saved by the new grace of God. Our sins have been taken care of by the blood of Christ. And how did that all take place? Because of an old rugged cross. Amen. A sinner's been made a saint. Praise God. Whoo! Hallelujah to that. Amen. 
I can't help you out if you ain't got that shout, amen. But I'm just telling you, I thank God that Jesus took my sins. And that great transaction, he imputed his righteousness unto me, praise God. The blood's been applied by the cross. Souls will live forever with God in heaven. Now, beloved, can I turn your attention? I've talked about the cross. And listen to me well here. I want you around to read this to you. And turn with me there, if you will. You need to listen well to the preacher this morning. In Mark chapter number 8. In Mark chapter number 8, the Bible reads here, Jesus is saying this in verse number 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and do what? Lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Beloved, there was a man that lived one time on earth and he had everything, everything and anything that this world could provide. This man, this man lived a life of power, prestige, family and friends, foods and finances. He had everything, you name it, he had it. This man that lived on earth, there was no experience in life that he did not experience. You can't say that, I can't say that. But this man could. This man experienced everything. He exhausted all five senses that we have of the body. Seeing and smelling and all that feeling and stuff. This man experienced everything. This man, there was no education that he did not have. This man read all the books, had all the wisdom that this world could provide. There was nothing that this man did not know about. He knew it all. There was a man that was engaged in everything under the sun. There was a man that was engaged in all activities of life. He has done everything, whether if it was good or whether if it was evil. This man did it all. He was engaged of all affairs. Now I'm talking about all affairs. You think about that just for a moment. Those evil things that people do, where they offer up sacrifices unto devils, he did it. Offer up sacrifices to God, he did it. This man right here, he killed people. This man right here, he indulged in sexual immorality like no one else. I'm telling you now, there's an individual, what shall a man gain? What shall he profit? If he gains all this world, loses his own soul. And beloved, I believe this right here, that this man could answer this question for you and I. What are you going to gain? The Bible tells us, what shall a man profit if he gains the whole world? The Bible tells us here in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse number 14. It said, I have seen all. That clarifies it, does it not? I have seen all the works that are done under the sun. And behold, all is vanity and vexation. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? And lose his own soul. As King Solomon said, I've done that. Everything under the sun. I've had money. I've had women. I've had fortune. I had fame. I had the praises of men. I had the accolades. I had people do things for me that no other people would do. You name it. I've done it. And it's all vanity. I'm here to tell you, beloved. Everything that this world has to offer is vanity vexation of the spirit. Beloved, here we see this. The Bible is telling us that without the cross of Christ, without Jesus Christ, we are empty on the inside. That's what that word vanity means. It means useless. It means that you have a void on the inside there that nothing can fill it. You stuff your life with all the things you want to. You can do that. You can do it now. You can go out there, experience all the things. You can buy all the things of this world and you can stuff this heart until you think you're content, but you'll come up unsatisfied. But with Jesus, hallelujah, I'm satisfied. Jesus fills the void. Get it all you want. Go after it if you want to. Get the houses, the lands. You get the excitement, the entertainment, the education. Go, get it. You're going to come back to the reality, just like Solomon said. It's all vanity. Vanity and vexation of spirit. Said, I thought it was going to lift me up, but what it did, it brought me down. There's only one that's going to lift you up is Jesus. 
There's only one that's going to satisfy the soul. It's Christ and Christ alone. You can't do it. You can have the 401k all you want to. You can have the nice houses. You can have the vans. You can have the party houses. You can go to the lakes. You can go wherever you want to. You can have it all. But you're going to come up empty unless you got Christ. Unless Jesus Christ. And beloved, we see this in our nation that we're living in. All we do, we're living in such a time. We're living in such a, a, a place where people, it won't take you long that you see the madness in our land. What's it all about? It's seeking after satisfaction. All about pleasing myself. All about doing what I want to do. And satisfying me, myself, and I. But always coming up empty. Have you ever asked yourself this question? How could somebody go up to an old lady and hit her upside the head, take her belongings, and go back home and say nothing's wrong with that? How could somebody go to an individual, put a gun to their face, and take all their belongings, take their car, and be okay with that? How could somebody take a little child and buy them for a measly dollar bill and abuse that baby? And be okay with that. How can somebody do all these things? Beloved, I'll even take it a little step further. Isaiah said this here. Isaiah chapter 1. He said, Israel is a nation that pretended to seek after God. They gave that good lip service. How can somebody play with God? How can somebody do that? How can they play around with the things of God? How can you play around with your eternal soul? Pretend that you're okay. Pretend that you're all right in the eyes of God. But your fruits are saying otherwise. Say, so, preacher, how could they do that? It's because they haven't been to the cross. You have not been to the cross. You have not been changed. You're still that little child. You've got your ten fingers and ten toes. But you've not been changed. You haven't been born again. By their fruits, you shall know them. By the fruits of your life, who are you living for? Who was your heart beating for? Who do you want to please? Answer that. Who do you want to please? See, when we talk about I'm going to please God, Jesus said if you're going to please God, you're going to keep His Commandments. You're going to keep His Word. Beloved, there's so much in the Gospels, there's so much in the Word of God where Jesus tells us what to do and what not to do. And by your fruits, your fruits, that's who you are. See, we think it's rebellion against the church. We, we, and, and even me, I'm thinking, boy, they, they, they don't want to do anything for Jesus because of the preacher. They don't want to do anything because they got what's called, what's it called today? Church hurt, right? They don't want to do anything for the kingdom of God because they've been church hurt. Ha! Huh. What a lie that is. Amen. So preacher ain't never been hurt in church. I get hurt in life. Amen. I'm telling you this right here. If you've been to the cross, your fruits will bear fruits of righteousness, loving Jesus Christ, keeping his commandments, not pleasing myself. We're all too good at that. We do it in church. Why you don't do nothing for God? Amen. That's why you don't serve the Lord with joy and happiness. It's begrudging. That's why you don't want to give. And oh no, I'm not talking about this right here. <laughs> Matter of fact, Jesus, did he have money to give? Didn't have a dime, did he? Did he? Didn't have a dime. Matter of fact, to get a dime, he sent one of his apostles out there and said, hey, go catch a fish. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> But Jesus gave. He gave the most precious thing that anybody can give. And that's your life. And I'm not just talking about dying. What did he do? He stooped down and he washed their feet. What else did he do? He invested their time in the apostles and the disciples. Jesus gave of himself. See where we live at in America. Here it is. I gave a dollar. I gave a dollar to the church. I gave a dollar to God. I'm giving. No, you're not. If you don't give yourself, that dollar bill means nothing. 
said, preacher, you don't want money coming into the church? I, I'm not about nickels and noses and, not, uh, and all that jazz. Beloved, it's about your heart being right with God. Amen. It's about you going to an old rugged cross. It's about you giving your life to the one that gave his life for you. Boy, we stand up and say, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, we live like hell. Stand up and say, I love Jesus Christ, but I'm going to go do what I want to do. I'm going to live in heaven forever with God. I question you. I question you, have you been to the cross? Have you been to the cross? Have you been to Jesus? Has the blood been applied? Has the wrath of God been lifted off of your life? If it has, what are you doing? Who are you living for? You know, the Bible tells us, matter of fact, in Philippians, I believe it's chapter number two, said, for me to live is Christ. For me to think is Christ. For me to walk is Christ. Whatever I do, wherever I go, it's about Jesus Christ. That's what he says. It's the word of God says. For me to live is is Christ. And then to finish that verse of Scripture, to die is gain. Can you say that honestly? I, I'm asking you about as serious as possible here. By the life that you are living, the fruit that you are producing. See, there again, I know. People say, Preacher, I, I don't think you should judge anybody. You can seek after this world. You can seek, seek after self-pleasure. You can go after it all you want to. What shall a man profit if he gain the world and lose his own soul? I believe we know this right here and we're done. I'm pretty sure for the majority of people know the man by the name Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs was the one that some of us have in our pockets and pocketbooks there. He's founder of Apple. He got the little iPhone. Steve Jobs died at 56 years old from pancreatic cancer. He died. Beloved, he died a billionaire, a very wealthy man. He died, and his last words are recorded, and it's said to be, it's said, to be said, he said these words. I've reached the pinnacle of success in business. In other people's eyes, my life is success. However, aside from work, I've had little joy. At the end of the day, wealth is just a fact that I've gotten used to. Right now, I'm lying on my deathbed, reminiscing of my life. And I realize that all the recognitions and all the wealth that I took so much pride in has faded and become meaningless in the imminent face of death. The Lord God of heaven knows everything. His eyes behold it all. Have you been to the cross? Have you been to Jesus? Is your life changed and producing the fruit of a Christian? If not, you'll be right along with Steve Jobs. And you'll say, I sought after this world. And realize at the end of it all, it's nothing. If you don't have Christ, you have nothing. But if you have Jesus, you have it all. If you have Jesus Christ, you have everything. If you have Christ, you can say, happy am I. Jesus is mine forever. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I know that I'm leaving this world behind because it's not my home. Hallelujah. My home is in glory. My home is in heaven because I've been to the old rugged cross where Jesus Christ died for me. Have you been to Jesus? Have you been to the cross? Have you been transformed? changed forever. Do you know what I'm talking about of the old rugged cross? There might be some of you, you need to come back to the cross. 
that you've drifted away. You need to come back to the cross because you've been letting this eye, this eye lead your life, not the heart. You've been letting the eye look after the things, look after the things of this world, look after the things of your family, and that's all you want to do rather than pleasing God. If you're saved, your heart should beat for only one person. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Do you need to come to the cross? Do you need to come back to the cross? How many of you are right with God? Today's the day of salvation. Today's the day the trumpet sounds. How will you stand before him? Don't justify yourself. You better let the word of God inspect your heart. And the Holy Spirit of God is living on the inside. He's already pointed that sin out. Repent of it, child of God. Turn away from it. How about it? Have you been to the cross? Have you? Has your life been changed? Has it? Not for me. Not for no one else. But this is your soul. Have you been to Christ Jesus? And let him take care of your sin debt. Let him take care of the wrath of God. Have you been to an old rugged cross? The fruits of righteousness now is being prevailing, being produced in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right here, right now. There's no doubt, God, there's people that need salvation. Lord, there's people in the church as well that need to come back to the cross. I'm so thankful that the foot of the cross is, is the, the ground, Lord, it's level. Lord, it's for whosoever. God, no matter who the individual is, no matter what they're faced with in life, they can come to the cross. I pray they'll do that. I pray your people Lord, that love that they once had, that zeal that they once had, Lord, that fire burning on the inside, and they wanted to do something for the kingdom of God. Lord, they'll come back. They'll come back to the cross. God, I pray for that one that's never been, that one that's never been to you, Lord Jesus. The blood's never been applied. They're still bound up in sin. They're still in the shackles of it, Lord. And underneath the condemnation of God, I pray they'll come today, repent, and trust in Jesus Christ. Bless, we pray now. Move in this invitation, we ask, all in Jesus' name. Amen. You'll stand to your feet, please.